John Simon Ritchie Burvley, better known as Sid Vicious, was born in London on May 10, 1957, the son of former guard John Ritchie and Hippie and Burvley. The family lived in Lee Green, and her father abandoned it shortly after her birth. Later, his mother went to Ibiza, Spain, to earn money selling drugs when Vicious was just three years old. Back in England, Sid had a very complicated childhood and adolescence. His mother remarried in 1965 to a man named Christopher, and in 1968 he died of cancer. Afterwards, and then Sid moved to Hackney, East London, and some time later he became friends with John Lydon. They were already considered strange, he already dyed his hair, influenced by David Bowie, and they both thought education was completely useless. Before becoming Sid Vicious, John was called Sly and ended up changing his nickname after being bitten by John Lydon's rodent, Sidney, and calling him Vicious. So the name Sid Vicious came from, as he is still known today. So John and Sid ended up running away from home. John couldn't take his family's religious fanaticism any longer, so the two ran away. At that time, the two used to earn money in street performances, with Vicious playing the tambourine. So, the two left school and passed by several squatters, which were abandoned buildings that became known as cultural centers and meeting centers promoted by punks. The two ended up living in Linda Ashby's apartment, who was a lesbian prostitute friend of theirs. Sid participated in two other bands before the Sex Pistols and joined the Sex Pistols in 1977. The band was created by Malcolm McLaren, who had a store called Sex, which sold accessories for young rockers and those considered strange. He also sold clothes, and he wanted to promote his store, so Sex Pistols was created. Sid joined the group in place of bassist Glenn Matlock, who was constantly at odds with Rodden, who was the vocalist. Sid took the bassist's place, but he didn't know how to play bass. Then, guitarist Jones helped him create the arrangements for all the songs, and they recorded the band's first album. So Rodden was the voice of the band, and Sid was the attitude, right? He was very aggressive, he had that punk attitude, his style was kind of the brand of the band. They had just signed a record deal with ENM Records, and Malcolm managed the band. However, the contract with the record company did not last long, and, due to the Sex Pistols' controversial lyrics, they were banned from playing in several places. Many stores also banned their records, so it was very difficult for the band. They started playing in secret many times, and people always flocked to see Sid, each source says something, but many of them said that everyone really wanted to see Sid because that was the band's attitude. So, in their short existence, the Pistols influenced the punk movement in the United Kingdom and produced several albums, among them, Never Mind the Bollocks Here's the Sex Pistols, which was one of the most famous. And now entering Nancy's story. Nancy Laura Spungen was born on February 27, 1958 in Pennsylvania, United States. Daughter of Frank and Deborah Spungen. Since she was little, Nancy was hyperactive and constantly. He attacked his two brothers, Susan and David. 
Nancy herself claims to have tried to kill her nanny during a fight with her mother. She attacked her with a hammer and said she hated her parents. At age 11 she was expelled from public school and received psychological treatment. Because she suffered from depression, she had attempted suicide several times and so her parents sent her to schools for special needs children. When she was 13, Nancy used drugs for the first time, and at 15 she was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Nancy was addicted to drugs, she was addicted to heroin, at 17 she ran away from home and went to New York and there she worked as a stripper in bars and was also a prostitute. Nancy was always a groupie, she always went to punk rock band shows, she always tried to interact with band members, like Aaron Smith, Ramones, New York Dolls. She was always among the bands and as it was New York, the bands were always playing there. And Nancy was always very problematic, she always had a lot of problems, and she tried to commit suicide several times and in one of those, a friend of hers gave her advice to move from New York to another place, so she ended up accepting that counsel and moved to London. So she goes to London in 1977 and that's where she met Sid, through Johnny Rodden, who was the singer. Even Nancy tried to have a relationship with Rodden, but he never wanted anything to do with her. So there in London she ended up staying in Linda Ashby's apartment and that was where Sid was also staying, so she and Sid shared the same mattress, which was in the living room. At that time, it had been exactly seven months since the Sex Pistols existed. So, the two slept together for five days and on the sixth day they had sex for the first time, Sid was a virgin. In an interview, Nancy said that she wasn't very attracted to him, but as they started sleeping together and so on, it ended up happening. In an interview she said that she taught him everything he needed to know, that she gave him that sexual aura that he had. Soon the two fell in love and started dating. Everyone knew that Nancy was addicted and one day Sid asked to use heroin with her, telling her that he had already used it before, which was a lie, so he spent the whole day vomiting. And from that day on, he developed the same addiction as his girlfriend, they were both addicted to heroin, as well as other drugs and also excessive alcohol use. Sid and Nancy have always had a philosophy of having lots of fun, living big and dying young. Nancy didn't like everyone, especially the other members of the band, right at the beginning of their relationship. The other members tried to warn Sid that she just wanted fame, that she just wanted someone to use drugs with her, but the Sid didn't care about the comments, he said they just wanted to cause intrigue, that it was all a lie. So at that time, Sid started to change a little, he was entering a whole new world and every time he wasn't with her, he was always talking about Nancy. So, no matter how much everyone tried to warn him, it was useless. And their relationship wasn't very healthy, Nancy was always the one in charge. She always imposed what she wanted on Sid and was always very rude and Sid always obeyed everything she said. And, in the press, they became known very quickly, because of their behavior which was very aggressive and violent, and their romance was very intense, so this caught people's attention. But it wasn't just their behavior, it was, there were several reports about domestic violence, which was normal, in their daily lives. 
And a lot of people said that Nancy and Sid were more like mother and son than lovers because she was always commanding and saying a thousand things and he was obeying. And as I said, their relationship affected the band a lot. Sid and Rotten were no longer friends, Johnny also started to move away from Sid, they were very disappointed, with his new addiction, he was drugged all the time. Then, in 1978 they went to Paris, to record the famous video, My Way, and other scenes for the film The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. So that year, 1978, Sex Pistols ended. And Nancy and Sid went to live in New York, at the Chelsea Hotel. Shortly after the Sex Pistols disbanded, Sid started a solo career and Nancy became his manager and agent. She even tried to do the backing vocals for his songs. Their relationship remained strong and so did their heroin addiction. Sid formed another band called Vicious White Kids and musicians such as Johnny Thunder, Rat Scabies, and Glenn Matlock, the Sex Pistols' first bassist before Sid, were part of the project, but Sid's career was doomed to failure. Although Sid was completely convinced that he was the soul of the Sex Pistols band and that he could very well go solo and have a successful career, but his career completely failed, and all the money he had, he and Nancy, spent on their heroin addiction. So, everything happened very quickly, the Sex Pistols were in 77 and in 78 they ended. And then it happened, the end of both. Nancy and Sid fought a lot, like I said, it wasn't a healthy relationship, they were on drugs all the time. So on October 12, 1978, Sid had blacked out, he had used a lot of drugs, so he ended up blacked out. So when he woke up, in room number 100 of the Chelsea Hotel in Manhattan, New York, he went to the bathroom of the room they were in and he found Nancy on the bathroom floor dead, with a single stab wound to the abdomen. So she probably bled to death. On November 22nd, Sid was arrested, accused of Nancy's murder, he was the main suspect. And when questioned, Sid told several versions, each time he said something. In one of these versions, he said that the two fought a lot that day, that they were very drugged and he ended up stabbing her, but that he had no intention of killing her. In another version, he said that he didn't remember absolutely anything that happened that day, that he had no memory at all. In another version, he said that she was very drunk, very drugged and fell on the knife. So, there are several versions, many believe that Sid was so drugged that he ended up doing this and don't even remember. And there is another version too. This hotel they were staying in. Chelsea was very well known, because there were always artists, who called the hotel home stayed there for long periods, and it is said that the two had the habit of leaving the door to their room always open, so anyone could come in and, that drug dealers kept coming and going, to be able to bring drugs to them, because they were addicted to heroin, so the door was open, people were coming and going all the time, so in this other version, it's another possible theory, for death from Nancy. Theory, a drug dealer entered the room to take drugs to them, something happened and he ended up murdering Nancy and running away and, even in this version, 
Sid would be unconscious the entire time and there are also rumors that $24,000 disappeared from their room in that same day. So in this theory, we don't know who this drug dealer was, they never found him, we don't know anything else about him, who this person is. And, in the last theory, Nancy committed suicide, she had a pact with Sid and who knows, they were very drugged where she simply wanted to do it and she cut herself in the abdomen and ended up bleeding to death. Anyway, Sid was accused and arrested. In the short period he was in jail, he wrote several songs and poems for Nancy, he tried to kill himself in jail several times and there are some sources that claim that the record company paid his bail to get out of prison. But what I found most was that Mick Jagger paid, not only the bail, but also Sid's lawyers. So, he got out of jail. The songs Sid wrote in prison were never recorded. Soon after being released, he gave an interview and then they asked him if he remembered anything, what he thinks happened that day. And he said that something happened that was supposed to happen, he said that Nancy, always he said she would die before she was 21 years old. And then they asked him what he was going to do now and he said that he just wanted to have fun, that this was his goal in life. And the truth is that everyone really believed that now Sid would get better, that he would stop. Use drugs, that he would recover, maybe record other albums. But right after he was released, a few days later, they threw a party to celebrate that, at his mother's house and after a few hours of partying, he went into the bathroom and locked himself in and injected a very large dose of heroin, then he ended up overdosing and was found dead on the morning of February 2, 1979, four months after Nancy passed away. So, Nancy passed away at 20 years old and Sid at 21. There are many places that say that the heroin he used on the day he died was given to him by his mother. In Sid's pants pocket, they found a poem he wrote for Nancy and, later, they also found in the pocket of his leather jacket, a suicide note where he said goodbye to people and said that he and Nancy had a death pact and he had to fulfill this pact. And in the note, which was very short, he asked to be buried next to her with his leather jacket. So, as much as many people believe that Sid's death was accidental, these notes kind of prove otherwise. Many people who knew him actually said that they had this death pact, yes. That it was real. And Sid wasn't buried next to Nancy, as he had requested, it was his wish. But they say he was cremated and that his mother threw some of the ashes into Nancy's grave. And a curious fact is that the knife used to kill Nancy, she had bought and given as a gift to Sid, he had a collection of. Knives, then, were a gift from her. And another interesting fact is that Sid's mother was also a drug addict. And, she died of an overdose, on September 6, 1996. The story of Sid and Nancy, despite being very short, is very famous. Many people talk about both, in songs, a film was also made, which is well known. The name of the film is, Sid and Nancy, Love Kills, with Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb, in the main roles. The script was based on the book, written by Nancy's mother, Deborah Spungen. There is also a song by the Ramones, called, Love Kills, which tells a little about their history. 
The song was recorded to be part of the film's soundtrack, but ended up not being used. So, this is the story of the couple, Sid and Nancy, which is very well known. It is still very famous today. So, be sure to check out some links, which I will leave for you, here in the description. I really hope you liked it and see you next time.